Th Hello, and thank you for joining FLTV. I'm Jason Neary. Top stories we have working for you today are a hot new club at school, relationships on campus, and how well our teams did in Portland. That's all coming up on FLTV. It's a little cube with a lot of personality. Let's send it over to Tanner Ravise with more on the Rubik's Cube. It's no puzzle an average person can solve. This 3x3 cube has taken faith by storm. There is now an extracurricular club for people who like to learn or become better at solving the Rubik's Cube. The leader of the Rubik's Cube club tells us a little about it. I think it's a great club. Kids enjoy it. It's fun learning to solve the Rubik's Cube and there are different math applications that go with it. Students seem very excited about the club and tell us if they are joining. Yes, because I really like to solve the Rubik's Cube and I really don't have anything much else to do. Obviously. Other students weren't so enthusiastic about the club and give their feelings about it. Not at all. I don't really feel like teaching anyone how to solve a cube. No, I don't. Uh, the Rubik's Cube level is right here and I'm right here, so I do not plan to join it at all. Austin Choi's sister tells us why her brother got the idea of creating a club like this one. Because he was starting a trend and everybody wanted to learn how to solve it, so I just gave him a suggestion to solve it and teach everybody how, because everybody wanted him to solve and teach him. Oh, hi, didn't see you there. Ruby's Cube Club is a new club at Faith Thruzer and it is very amazing. For FL TV, I'm Tanner Ravze. Thanks, Tanner. The Rubik's Cube Club meets Mondays from 315 to 345 in room 207. All right, up next, the gift that keeps on giving. Elisa Lowe has more. Mr. Schumacher and Mrs. Sweet joined together to bring this organization to faith. They even joined in on donating their hair. Kay Levino says how she feels before she cut her hair. Um, no, I'm not really nervous. I'm just um, excited, anticipated of what it's going to look like. Other participants also had mixed emotions. I was happy. I was waiting for a long time because Mrs. Wheat and I had been planning this for over a year so I was excited. It was the scariest thing ever because I knew that there was no turning back at that time and it was just you could hear the scissors and everything so it was pretty scary. I was really happy because I could also feel that someone else would get my hair and that my hair would just grow back anyways. The part you didn't see is the girls heading over the salon. After seeing the haircuts, students and teachers like reacted very differently to seeing their new hairstyle. Um, it was a little shocking, but I li really liked it. So. I liked it. It's going to take me some time to get used to it, but I liked it. I hated it. Like, I pretended to like it at the salon to, like, not make the lady feel bad or anything. But, like, it's not because she cut it wrong or anything. I just didn't like it at all because I've never cut it this short. Eventually, all the girls like the hairstyles. Some of those want to do good and others want to join. Overall, Hair That Cares was a huge success. I'm Alicia Love for FLT. Thanks, Alicia. Ever wondered how long Valentine's Sweethearts last year at Faith? Nick Chingros has the inside scoop. Students tell us about their Valentine. Um, I would think my boyfriend would be my Valentine, so I guess. Um, I do have a Valentine. No, I do not. Uh, yeah, I think so. Huh. Yeah, I have a Valentine. Are you in a relationship? Yes. Who are you in a relationship <laughs> with? <laughs> Nick Wendell? Uh, yes, I'm in a relationship. With who? Uh, Taylor Worshi. Uh, yeah. With I who? Am. Vanessa Loudon. Some of the administrators tell us about middle school relationships. Well, I think middle school relationships where you have like a boyfriend or a girlfriend can be um, all right if, if it's just to learn about what it's like to like somebody and, and to learn about yourself maybe, like what do I like in a boy or what do I like in a girl. I don't think middle school students should just go like on a date though, one on one with no adult supervision because I think that would open the door for maybe things to happen that are inappropriate, like maybe being sexual or, or the pressure to maybe use alcohol or drugs where it's not appropriate. But I think it's okay for a middle school boy and girl to like each other and, and be boyfriend and girlfriend. I really don't think too much about middle school relationships because there's not a lot to them. Lots of students and teachers at Faith are enjoying Valentine's Day. I think I found my Valentine. 
Have a good Valentine's Day. Thank you, Nick. Next up, our middle school teams had a great success up in Portland, Oregon. Haley Gravit had a bird's eye view. Haley? Students and faculty had nothing but support for the teams going to Portland. Historically, we've done really well. I know my wife and I are going to be rooting for the Crusaders uh, dance team and basketball, boys and girls, uh, to bring home the victory up there. So I'm pretty confident in our chances. I don't know about the girls or the dance team, but we don't struggle. I think that our girls team will do really well. Our goal this year is to win at least one game in the tournament. Both boys and girls B team put up a fight to bring us home a victory. We played the two best teams, so we made our goals and we did good. And it was really fun for all of us to cheer for the boys. And the boys are doing really good and I like it. We asked some students how they thought dance team would do and whether or not they would bring home the gold. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they were moving their bodies like crazy. It's not really about losing or winning. We still had a ton of fun. Portland was really fun and all the teams did great. For FLTV, I'm Haley Gravitt. Go team. Thank you, Haley. Now let's send it over to Tanner Prince with Winter Sports. 18 boys and girls basketball players tell us how their season is going. It's going good so far. Putting in some hard work in the weight room and on the court. And so far we've only lost two games. When we're looking forward to Valpo, we've had some really good games. Now B-Team tells us how the Portland tournament went. Uh, I think we did really well. I didn't do so well, but uh, I, think, I think our whole team did great. We should have won. Well, <laughs> we lost both of our games, but we still played really well because the teams are really hard. C-Team tells us how their season's going. C-Team basketball. We're actually pretty good. No, we're not. We suck. Lacrosse teams tell us that they are going to lax it up this year. It's going good. We're going to play a Best of the West tournament soon, and I think we can win the whole thing. I think we'll be all right. I think we'll be really good and uh, play really well. It sounds like lacrosse and basketball teams will all be successful this year. For FLTV, I'm Chad Pritz. Yeah. Boom! Hi, I'm Andrew Johnson, and I'll be telling you about the weather for the next few days. Today, we have a high of 63 with bright sunny skies and a low of 41. Tomorrow, look for some great Friday weather to end the week with a high of 66 and a low of 46. And we're in great shape for the weekend with highs of 66 and 67 and lows of 44. So go out there and have some fun. Now let's send it out to Michael Flangus with Portland Weather for our basketball and dance team. Thanks, AJ, for all you hot shots up there in Portland. Here's your weather. Today, it's going to be chilly with a, with a high of 50 and expect rain all week. Tomorrow, there will be a high of 51 and a low of 41. Burr, where's my jacket? Saturday, we'll have a 50 degree high and a 40 degree low. And last but not least, the holy day of Sunday will have a high of 52. Let's see what's going on in the drama department. I think Josh Buten has the golden ticket. Excited faith students are ready to fill the CPAC. I'm very excited about the Willy Wonka play. Um, they have good actors and faith that are going to be playing in it. Um, it's a really good movie, first of all. And uh, like I said, it's just, I'm very excited for that. I'm very excited about the musical. It's the best thing to happen since Oprah stopped doing her show. I think Willy Wonka is going to be really good, and I might go see it. The play may be fun for the members of the play, but there are still challenges that they face making it. The hardest thing is standing still and learning my lines, memorizing them. Uh, my favorite part about being in Uvalupa is that um, there's a lot of dancing. It's a lot of fun being an actor for musical. It is my first time being in a musical at Faith, so it's really fun. Uh, Mr. Elliott's an awesome director. He's uh, pretty fun to work with. Now, I play Violet Beauregard, so the toughest part for being her is probably chewing the gum while talking because it muffles your voice. We get uh, the coolest costumes, I think. We have the big butts and orange faces. Hey, Felipe, did you hear about the Willy Wonka musical going on March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th? You should totally go and see it. Hold on, let me finish this really quick. I'm Josh Buten for FLTV. Now let's toss it over to Matt Sherman with the Super Bowl. 
Thanks, guys. I'm Matt Truman reporting on this year's Super Bowl Sunday. Everyone has a different view of Super Bowl Sunday. I think it's the best day in America. Super Bowl is a fun time to laugh in all the Patriots faces, all their fans. It's on par with some American holidays these days, I would say. I don't, I don't know where to put my hands. Um, well, I didn't watch it, but it's a good cause for betting. I had a big party with my family. Yep, we went wild and crazy and ate a lot. I think it's fun. It's kind of, in my opinion, it's kind of like not worth all the hype, um, like all the hype and stuff, but it's fun. Well, I gotta say, it's, it's a fun time. You know, Super Bowl's great. I like the Giants. I'm glad they won. But I gotta say, lax. I thought the food was great. Pizza, I thought it was fantastic. We asked everyone what they thought of the battle between the Patriots and the Giants. So lax. I thought there was a lot of mistakes and so they didn't call all the uh, fouls and stuff. It kind of surprised me that a team like the Patriots that are considered to be well coached would come out and make mistakes like 12 men on the field, um, things of that nature. Um, you know, I was surprised how the ball went. The Giants went, how, set, put them down. Oh, I think it was pretty cool. I think Eli Manning was pretty lucky. I think it was a good game. Um, it they played both teams played pretty good, I guess. But the Patriots kind of like sucked in the end. I thought the Cowboys did a great job. Some people rightly thought that the Giants would be victorious. However, some people thought the Patriots were going to win. I thought that I liked the you know, the Patriots, but then they, I should put these down. I don't know where to put the Giants, the Patriots. I don't, I don't know. The Cowboys, but then I heard they were in it. I want the Giants to win because all my friends are in New York and they all want them to win and my team was already knocked out. So I just went for the team my friends liked. Come on, Zach, you feel like Tom Brady. Well, it looks like the Super Bowl was exciting, unless you were a Patriots fan. For FL TV, I'm Matt Sherman. Thanks, Matt. Well, it looks like our newscast has come to a close. For FL TV, I'm Jason Neary. Stay holy, Faith Lutheran.